season, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask that you give, we send a special blessing to them, Lord. Put your arm around them, Father God. Comfort them in their grief, Father God. Give them peace, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for that. Lord, we ask you to bless the leadership of this city, Father God. And in any, anything that they do, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let them seek your wisdom, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for that. Lord, we just ask you to bless the police department, the urgent care, any other city of any, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we just thank you for them. Lord, we just ask that you continuously, continuously be with our children, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bless them. Keep them safe, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Help them to make the right decisions, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, so we ask that you not only be with them in their homes, Lord, but go with them to the schools, Father God, and any, anywhere else in between, Father God. Bless the faculty of those schools, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we just thank you for that. Allow your spirit to dwell on the school campuses, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And again, Lord, we just thank you for those blessings, Father God. Lord, we pray for our, uh, our world government, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the United States, Father God. Be with them, Father God, in their decision-making process, Father God. Let your spirit just extend from not only here, but everywhere and in anywhere, Father God, in the name of Jesus. All over the world, Lord, and we just thank you for that. Father God, we just thank you for the blessing of this sanctuary. Lord, we just ask you to continue to send servants, Father God, to serve with a servant's heart, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for them right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to tell you that we love you. We praise you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Father God, for everything that you do. Lord, touch those on the prayer list, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal those who need healing, Father God. Comfort those who need comfort, Father God. Give peace, Father God, for those who are in turmoil, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Again, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just ask you to stand, remain standing for the scripture reading. And the word of the Lord be coming from Psalms 47 and 1. And then read as such. Oh, clap your hands, all ye peoples. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Amen. May the Lord have a blessed upon the reading of his word. I now turn it over to the praise team. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We came to give Lord our praise on today. The Lord has brought our battles for us. One, we give praise to God. This is our Lord praise for the Lord on today. And we say thank you, God. We say yes, Lord, to you, God.
that's here this morning. We thank you that you came to give God your best on this morning. We thank you that you came to receive what he has for you on this morning. Amen. Because we know we can be anywhere. Hallelujah. Somebody said the bed is always been, always feels the most comfortable on Sunday mornings. Amen. But here we are. Hallelujah. Here we are. So I praise God for you. There is going to be just a, a, an announcement or two, amen. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge our first-time visitors. Are you a first-timer this morning? If you could just wave your hand at me this morning. If you're a first-timer, amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Are there any more first-timers this morning? First-timers? <coughs> Glory to God. If you would, can you tell us your name and, and where you're from?
miss home that much, you better get an iPhone and FaceTime everybody. Yeah. You know, it's cool. Our children can be released into the children's church wherever they, uh, wherever they are. My wife said, Bishop is behind me because he must have a mighty word. There is a word, but I also have a leg cramp. <laughs> I'm not going to even lie to y'all. <laughs> I got a leg cramp. I have to stand up, y'all. <laughs> I know I'm going to tell you the truth. Regardless. Brother Clifford in the back. Brother Clifford got Brother Frazier, they call him Butch. That's his nickname. I found out the ministers him. Y'all, we have some things that we're going to do in 2022 um, that we just couldn't really do the rest of this year because of COVID and everything that was going on. But one of the things that he talks to me about when, he, when we first connected was he has a desire and a passion uh, for prostate cancer awareness. And, um, and that's just something that's, that's near and dear to my heart for several reasons. But uh, early, for, early, first quarter of 22, we want to have the, uh, the screening done here. There's a mobile screening unit that comes to the church. And men, 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 please don't think that you're too young and it can't happen to you. Um, early detection is key when it comes to prostate cancer, right? So um, if you're over the age of, I'd say, 35, it's time to start thinking about uh, getting a prostate exam. And it will be done here. I just believe by faith we're going to make that happen. And there's another component that he's working on with mental health issues. Um, believe it or not, even in the church, mental health is a problem. It's an issue right. in the church. Right. Come on. And we can, we can tell everybody, just call on Jesus and walk away if you want to. Nah. Um, however, faith without works is dead. Nah. There are some times where Jesus can heal you instantly. There's other times where he'll say, now I'm going to send you to a doctor. Now, now, it's amazing how... We believe in cancer doctors, we believe in heart doctors, we believe in every other doctor. But when it comes to a mental health doctor, we think that's a joke. Let me tell you something. Please do not misunderstand that there are plenty of people sitting in church. You may be sitting next to one, or you may be one yourself, and hey, with depression and thoughts of suicide and everything else, all right? And so we're going to get some help and relief right here to the church. So we'll be talking this week, early 22, we're going to be doing that. Um, my wife took my thunder about Brother Eddie. I was going to introduce him. I had a whole trumpet solo and everything. But uh, right after service, he'll be with us. Those that can stick around for 45 minutes, please just go right into the multi-purpose room, and he's going to give us some of his experiences, all right? It's, a, it's an honor to have um, all of our veterans here. And, and uh, Brother Eddie has traveled around giving his story. And I said, why not do it here at home, amen? Yeah. And then uh, two more things. Brother Sarge, it's good to have you back, man. Yeah. I call, I call him right here. That man is a walking, if you don't know what a metronome is, a metronome is something that keeps time for rhythm. And he's a walking metronome. That's right here. And he's been out with an illness, but the Lord has saw fit to heal his body. Right. And now he's back And because of that, and because of that, we got to meet, some of y'all got to find out that the other young man that plays the drums can sing. Yeah. You know, I was going to sing myself, but then I figured, you know, let him go ahead and do it. <laughs> and finally, last but not least, our city was hit with two tragedies uh, this past week. Uh, one, there was a young man, uh, yes. part of Ocotillo, and uh, they were shooting. And uh, this is Miss Monica's family, and we're praying for her family. Um, the young man lost his life that night. There's just a bunch of senseless stuff happening across the valley. And then the very next day, while the city was bracing for what happened the night before, there was an 87 year old man I, I read uh, that decided that he didn't want to wait for the bus that was stopped. You know when the bus stops, they have stop signs on the side? He decided that he had somewhere to go. And he hit the back of the bus and then um, didn't stop. He decided to keep going anyway. Wow. And he hit three kids. Wow. One of them, a little girl, died. Her brother is in ICU fighting for his life. And there's a third child. Now, the mother of these two, they work, she works at Zappa Prime. Can't think of her name off the top of my head, but we reached out to the family and we let them know that we were here in whatever capacity we could be here in. And so I'm asking um, that you all just you know, pray for that family. And pray for our children getting on and off those buses and our bus drivers. 
and pray that some of these drivers get some sense. All right, this is just, and it, you know, it's a wonder that it's only happened this one time because we see people just disobey and disregard bus drivers all the time. You know, when the bus stops and the stop signs come out the back, that means everybody stops. Stop. I don't know if y'all think that just means for the bus. That means for everybody. Both sides stop. I know you're in a hurry. I know you got places to go. But imagine if that was your child getting off that bus. And that the court me, okay? So please, please pray for that family. Be mindful of the road. And I'm just that bold. If I see somebody that passes the bus and they should have stopped, I catch them at the stop sign. And I roll the window down and say, you know, good and well, you were supposed to stop over there. Y'all, we, we got to start calling this stuff out. Our kids are in I'm serious. Our kids are in school, right? dancing and worshiping if you're not going to leave here and do nothing about it. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm so tired of timid Christians that's just bold in church but pass them out there. Y'all got to stop that. Y'all bold. Y'all bold with each other. You'll tell another saint off in a minute, but get out to the world you'll be quiet as a church mouse. Y'all got to stop that mess. If you see it, say something, please. I don't want to lose another child. Let's, let's, let's go uh, to 2 Corinthians 11 and 1. Just gonna park there and you can close your Bible. Um, we're gonna deal with a saying that became popular about four or five years ago, and everybody wore it on their wrist. And um, it really proved how hypocritical some of us can be. I'm glad that we praised and we worship. Second Corinthians 11 and 1. I'm glad we praised and we worship. Our worship team was amazing this morning. Amen. 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 glad that we enjoyed worship and we enjoyed praising with each other. Now I'm here for 25 or 30 minutes to agitate your soul. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, if I, I got on your nerves by the end of this, then I didn't do my job. I plan to get on your nerves today. Is that alright? Yeah. See, they don't want to praise with me. That's yeah. Can I tell you something? If you go to church week after week and you don't feel any conviction, Come on, sir. Come either you're in the wrong church yeah. or something's wrong with your Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. If you go to church week after week and you sit in church and you don't feel nothing that says ouch, if you open the word and you don't see anything that makes you say ouch, then chances are you something's wrong with your soul or you're in the wrong place. Right. And so when I say I came to get on your nerves, somebody should be excited because I think it's an opportunity for us to grow. Listen, I was studying for this and I got on my own nerves. So if I'm going to get it, y'all going to get it too, all right? Paul said, follow me, imitate me. Just as I imitate Christ. I just want to leave it right there. With the topic of what would Jesus do? Right, what would Jesus do? Paul said, imitate me. Follow me as I follow Christ. Let me just take a quick segue and say Paul was the apostle. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Paul uh, did things and wrote things that we guide our churches off of today. However, Paul made one thing clear. Follow me as I follow Christ. If you take the inverse of that sentence, you can realize he's saying, when I say, well, if it looks like I'm not following Christ anymore, stop following me. Amen. And as a leader, as a leader, I'm here to tell you the same thing. Follow me as I follow Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. When you start to see things, if you start to see things, and you start to see that your leaders are not following the direction that God has called them to follow them, don't you be a fool. Jump that ship real quick. Are y'all with me? key thing here is Paul was saying, I need you to follow me as I imitate what Christ did. And I told you a few years ago, there was a bracelet that everybody wore and said, what would Jesus do? And they're rocking this bracelet. And I've seen some of the most hellacious, hell-raising, nasty people wearing a bracelet that said, what would Jesus do? And I would sit there and scratch my head and say, surely he wouldn't be nasty. But yet still we're wearing this thing as it's a novelty. Now here's the deal. As believers, as Christians, as disciples of Christ, we are to imitate Christ in all that we do. This is why people don't know it. And I saw, I saw a meme the other day. It says, I don't, it's not like I don't love God and I don't love the church. It's just I can't stand the people because they look nothing like their father. We have gotten to the point where people refuse to come to church because they come here for an experience and they leave here with a grudge. Come on. We shout and we dance, but we can't speak to each other after service. No. We wait until somebody is missing for six weeks before somebody calls and say, oh, you've been on my heart. How have you been doing? And I thought, if I'm one of those people, I'll be the first one. I'm delivered now. Thank you for not praying for me when I needed it. And so here's the deal. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Not just in church. 
because we have seven, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That's 196 hours a week. We're only in church for 90 minutes. 90 minutes for most of us. Unless you come to Bible study or Sunday school. Let's just say that you come to everything. You're in church for three hours out of 196. He's saying, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Not just in church, but the other 193 hours a week. Well, Isn't it funny how we can be like Christ while we're here? Yes. But we get home and we like somebody else. Yes. To the point where we get in church and start shouting, our kids are looking like, where did that come Where'd that come from? You look like that, bro. One of, the most, one of the most damning things to a believer is for one of their neighbors to know that they're a believer. And so I didn't even know you was a Christian. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Y'all mad at me yet? No. Give me 10 minutes. Okay. All right. First, first John 2. First John 2. Let's start at verse 3. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims I know God but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in truth. But those who obey God's word only truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know that we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives just as Jesus did. Y'all there? Yes. Jesus was humble. Jesus was loving. He was forgiving. He was compassionate. Jesus was a student. He was a teacher at the same time. He wasn't too big to sit down and learn from somebody. Jesus walked with no reputation. He didn't want you. He didn't care about what his title was. He said, who do you say that I am? And what he asked was, do you really know who I truly am? Jesus had authority in his hand, power and authority in his hand, but he walked in submission to the Father. If we are believers, what's the point of coming to church if we're not going to leave here living the way that Jesus lived? 1 John chapter 2, verse 9. If anyone claims I am living in life, but hates a fellow believer. Ah, that's tough right there. Uh, wow. Hates a fellow believer. That person is still living in darkness. The scripture lets us know that there's people in church that are walking around in the dark. Simply because they have the light of the world inside of them, they can't stand another believer. That's what the word says. See, it's quiet right now. And a hush just fell over Jerusalem. Right? First John 4, another love chapter, verse 20. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people, we see. How can we love a God that we cannot see? I'm going to help us out really quick. In my family, my family is interesting. We grew up as a big family. Now we're a smaller family because of, of death and things. We're separated some things. And, and we have family members that we really don't speak to that often. Right. Right. I'll be honest with you. We have family members that we can't stand. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so the family members will come together. And when another family member's name comes up, you know, I'm cool over her. No, I'm cool over her. And we'll talk amongst each other as a family. Right. But let you say something about it. Yeah, yeah. Let you say something about yeah. that. Yeah. All of a sudden, issues are over. We might have to square up. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. In a body of believers, we may not always agree with one another. But we can't allow disagreement to get to the point where we start to hate one another. Why? Because we are many parts, one body, we are one family. As a matter of fact, to go back to the family analogy, if my brother right here does something to me in church, and we may not talk for a week, I bet I will not let anybody else put their mouth on him. Because this is my family. Amen. What? Amen. 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 I said family, y'all. Yeah, it is. Amen. Okay, you know, that's my family right there. Right? And so if we're going to truly walk as Jesus did, and this is what I really want to know, because I'm starting to find out there are people who just like to have church, but they don't really want to know Jesus. Come on, come on, Bishop. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not trying to pastor anybody who doesn't want to know Jesus. If you just want to come to church and dance, come on to church and dance. But, 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 but when it comes to the time where you need a pastor, I'm going to give you a word and say, well, start there and then come see me. Why? Because I'm not going to wear out my suits or my patience with people who really don't want to walk like Jesus walked. Come on, Jesus. Wow. Come on, Jesus. You're supposed to be the man of God. So are you. Yes. When he saved me, he saved you, just like he saved me. When he called you out of darkness, he called you out of the same darkness. Amen. When he told me to go to fulfill the Great Commission, he also told you to go and fill the Great Commission. Amen. We're going to stop assuming that only the pastor or the bishop has an assignment. We all have an assignment. Amen. First Peter 2, First Peter 2, 21. For God calls you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. 
He is your example. You must follow in his footsteps. What Peter tells us here is if you want to be as Christ was, if you want to walk as Christ walked, even when you're suffering, we have to do good. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. Yeah, that's, 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 I, I got like six amens and 27 wow. faces and 53 angry folks, and that's okay. If I'm watching Facebook, I probably see the angry emoji. But here's the thing. God is saying even in suffering, you yes. are good because that's yes. what Christ did. Yes. Who are you to tell the Lord that you're not going to do good because you're going through a season of bad? Oh, wow. who, are, who are we to tell God that we don't feel like doing good because things aren't adding up in our life? If I can hear Jesus say, Jesus, I'm sorry. When was the last time you got on the cross? When was the last time you took punishment for sins that you didn't commit? When was the last time you shed blood for anybody? How dare you tell me that you don't want to do good because things are bad? But I want to be like Jesus. Y'all still love me? Yes. Give me seven minutes. <laughs> Uh, Mr. T, can you throw my towel? I think it's over there. I think I'll throw it. Jesus, Jesus. I told you on Philippians 2, the Bible says that Jesus came and made himself of no reputation. Thank you. I meant to grab it. Thank you. He made himself of no reputation. No reputation means what my status is doesn't even matter. I'm coming to do a job. I'm coming to do an assignment. But what that means is when I get there to my assignment, I don't need you to bow at my feet because I'm so-and-so. Right, right. I can't hear you to serve. Amen. This is evident when the disciples are arguing. He was walking with some pretty entitled people. These 12 people that he picked were special. They were unique. And I think in a minute, in ministry, they started to feel themselves a little bit. You know how it gets when somebody tells you that you sang real good that Sunday, you start to feel yourself a little bit. Yeah. Somebody tell you that you really taught that Bible, so you start to feel yourself a little bit. Be honest with ourselves because, yeah. because pride and vanity, those are one of the things that the enemy uses to take us out because this is how he got kicked out of heaven. The Bible said that he tried to exalt himself up to the level of God and he had to be removed. And so, pride and vanity, those things go hand in hand when it comes to ministry. And this is one of the prayers you have to have before you minister and after. Lord, let my pride be checked in this particular moment. Don't let me get moved by the applause of the crowd. Can I help somebody in here? Don't you dare build yourself up off the applause of the people because once they stop clapping, you're going to be sad. And so, Jesus had to walk with these disciples and they were feeling each other a little bit. Mark chapter 10, they were arguing about who was going to be the greatest. Jesus, when you leave, Make sure that who's sitting on your right side. Right. When you leave, make sure that you put me in charge. When you leave, make sure that everybody knows that I'm the man. Uh -huh. Mark chapter 10, what would Jesus do? Jesus looked at them in verse 42 and says, You know, the rulers in this world lord it over people, and officials flaunt their authority over those, those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader amongst you must be your servant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whoever wants to be the leader Amen. must be what? I can preach a whole message right there. For the simple fact that for whatever reason in the church, as soon as we get a title, we never, we no longer want to serve. And the Bible says if you truly want to lead, if you truly that make that title mean something, walk into that title, whatever it is. If you have the title, you should be serving. You should be going around telling everybody who you are. You should know everybody. They make sure that if something's going on, uh, you know, Bishop, we got it, da, 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 da. But one time, one time, I was stuck at the tire shop, and I had, I had, I had a ball tire and a flat tire. Uh, now, if you know me, I just take off and run. Got to go somewhere, got to go, got to go. They pay attention to those tires. And so when I was pulled over on the side of the road, the man came, he said, yeah, we got to get you to the tire shop. No problem, get me there. Man walked up, and I'm changing my tire, because they were taking too long. And the man said, the Bishop changing the tire. The Bishop got to get home. Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen. Whoever wants to be the greatest, needs to follow my servant. Verse 44, verse 44, whoever wants to be first must be the slave of everybody else. Y'all know what a slave is? Yes. A slave literally says, I'm here at your service. He says that if you want to be the greatest, you got to be willing to be at the service of everybody that you're trying to lead. Amen. Oh, you hear me? Amen. And I want to be, I want to walk as Jesus did. But I want everybody to bow my feet and kiss my ring because I have a title now. That's not what the word says. Come on, Bishop. 
Okay, we'll take a little bit slip from it. Verse 44, verse 45. For even the son of man came not to serve, but to, not to be served, but to serve others. And to give his life on a ransom. Now this is where we mess up. We're going to get to this, what would Jesus do in these different scenarios. He says the son of man came not to be served, yes, right. to be but to servant. serve. Yes. Woo! Yeah, yes. you all shout on that. Yes. But we don't look at what comes after the covenant. Mm -hmm. And to give his life yes. for me as a ransom. Yes. Can I help you? If you're not laying down your life, you're truly not serving. Amen. That's what you learn. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went down and I gave out some socks because I was on, you know, I was on, I, I have nothing else to do, so I'm just going to get out some socks. That's not truly serving. That's just showing up for credit. Amen. Serving requires a stretching. Right. Requires you to stretch beyond your comfort zone. Come on. Ask me how I know because when they hung him on the cross, they stretched him all the way up to the point where his ligaments couldn't even hold his bones together. That's what true serving is. Now tell me this about yourself: Are you really serving if you're not stretching? Come on. And if you have not stretched in service yet, baby, you really ain't served yet. Yeah, yeah but I want to walk like Jesus. I want to walk with Jesus. I want to walk like Jesus. Well, if you, if, you, if you haven't stretched, you ain't really walking like him yet. Now, I understand stretching is uncomfortable. But there's this thing called the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. That when you don't feel like stretching, he can stir up the gift inside and leave you the energy to stretch. There's this thing called the Holy Spirit that will allow you to stretch beyond your own capabilities now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. If you really rely on the Holy Spirit, you can stretch. Amen. Amen. What would Jesus do? I gave us, let me give us about five scenarios. Preach, Bishop. And then I'm going to go home. And hope they all come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't, I'll preach to myself. I did it before. First thing, first thing, first thing. Matthew 9, verse 35. It talks about Jesus was teaching throughout all the land. And the people, he was healing people. Right. And people were coming to be a part of what was going on. People, other people were frustrated because they're like, look, there's too many people coming. Mm -hmm. Mark 9, chapter 9, on verse 35 says, Jesus looked on the multitudes and he had compassion because he saw they were sheep without a shepherd. How do you handle the crowd? How do you, how do you view the crowd? Well, people are pressing in. Here's the thing. We pray for this anointing. We get it, then we get mad when people want to touch it. We pray for this gift and God gives it to us, then we get mad when people want to tug on it. They just go, wear me out. The Bible says Jesus saw the multitude and he had compassion on it. I saw something the other day from a believer on Facebook who has some very disparaging things to say about the people who sleep at Stater Brothers, according to Stater Brothers at night. And I was a little bit frustrated, but the Lord wouldn't let me check him publicly. So I sent him a text message. I had to send him this scripture. When Jesus saw the multitude, he had compassion. Because he saw them as a sheep without a shepherd. Right. What if those people sleeping in front of Stater Brothers are not just hungry, not just cold, not just thirsty? What if they need a shepherd? Amen. What if God allowed you to see that so you can go and minister and witness to them? What if you are the voice that was sent to them if they take up their bed and walk right now? And by faith they take up their bed and they walk away from the How is it that we can look at people who have less than us or worship different than us or act differently and look down on them when we say we want to be like Jesus? And Jesus said, when I saw them, I had compassion on them. The church can be the most uncompassionate place in the world. Yeah. You know somebody's going through, yeah. but instead of putting out a helping hand, you put a word of judgment on them. You know someone is struggling, but instead of embracing them, you put out a word of judgment on them. Now, let me pause real quick, because everybody who seems struggling isn't really struggling. Some folks just want attention, but there are other people, there are other folks who are legitimately What would Jesus do? Somebody say compassion. Compassion. Yeah, compassion. Number two, what would Jesus do when he's faced with gossip? Uh, I'm only picking on church problems today. Yeah, yeah. Because church is a place of not compassionate folks, and church is a place that loves gossip. I don't understand. And when people say, I'm sick of this church or that church because there's gossip in the church, I'm going to go to another church where there's no gossip. Go on over there. Gossip will meet you when you there. Gossip goes back to the New Testament. Yes, it does. Paul was writing to Corinth about gossiping. Yes. Paul was writing to Ephesus about gossiping. Mm -hmm. 
If you want gossip about the church, how about this? Instead of running, put a stop to it. Amen. Amen. There's a saying that says gossip stops when he hits the ears of a wise person. That's, that's the saying. That's the saying. In, 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 in John chapter 8, these, these men, these messy gossiping men, brought to Jesus this woman who was caught, who they called an adultery. Right, right. And they came and said, Jesus, hey, we got her. We caught her. Right. Adultery. Right. Gossips will always have a scripture to back up why they're telling you the business. <laughs> Doesn't it say in the word that if she's called adultery, she got to Don't you know how gossips always have a scripture? Don't they always have one? Yeah. Yes, yes. And Jesus looked at them. The Bible says he got in the dirt. One preacher told me that's why it's good to let Jesus get in your dirt. God the dirt, he wrote something. Nobody knows what he said, you know what he wrote. But he jumped up and said, let he what thou said. The Bible says he looked around and when he got up, he said, where'd those accusers go? Where'd those people who were scandalizing your name, where'd they go? Where'd those gospers go? Now, this is what's interesting to understand, and some of you have heard me say this before, and I will say it again. If you haven't heard it, be surprised. If you have heard it, be quiet. Here we go. Gossip hits the wings of a wise person and stops. Right, right. This is what I've learned about gossip. So you got to ask this question. Right. These few questions. One, what, what makes you so comfortable with me right. to make you feel that I'm approachable with somebody else's right. mess? Right. 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 Two, were you there when the act was committed? Because if you were, you're just as bad as has anybody ever paused to ask a question? Mm -hmm. How did a bunch of men catch a woman in adultery? Mm -hmm. Unless they were involved. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Or they were watching. Yeah. In my Holy Ghost mind, I said, well, which one of the, which one of you men was the one that was with her? Yeah. And so this is why Jesus said, now notice Jesus didn't condone her actions, right. but he didn't let them walk away in their sin as well. Right. And so when, 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 what would Jesus do with gossip? Right. He put it into it. Amen. What do we do as believers? Hmm. We hear something yeah, about Brother right. Sarge. We don't put it into it. Hmm. And so it festers in our spirit all week. Hmm. Then when we see him next week, we say we'll be praying for him. Yes. He says hi. Yeah. And then what do we do? We go and get two or three other people to spread the gossip too. Amen. Yes, yes. This is a year of recovery. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Some of us are going to recover our names in 2022. Yeah. The name that was scandalized in 21. Some of us are going to recover our names. But this is what I found out about the gossips. They're real big and bold when they run in their mouth. Right. When they find out it's not true. They want to apologize in private. No. No, no, keep that same energy. No, 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 no. If you disrespect it in open, come on and apologize in open. Tag me in your apology as well. Go ahead and do what you gotta do. Don't you dare. See, this, this is what we gotta understand. When, when it comes to gossip, we gotta be bold enough to stand there and tell them, A, hey, it's not gonna go any further. B, when it comes that you lie, you gonna have to go back and address that person. So let's tell somebody, keep mess out of the church. Anybody imagine? Yeah. Oh, no. She said yes. No. Okay. <laughs> One person said yeah. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Number three, what would Jesus do? We're dealing with sinners. Understand. We have this thing in religious circles. Right. Where as leaders, you can't become common. Mm -hmm. That's a life in the pit of hell. Yes. Because Jesus was just as cup. Y'all not hear me? Yes, oh. yes. We have this thing when I get a title and I get a gold chain, I get a gold ring, I need to separate myself from the common folks. Well. But my scripture says that I have a high priest that I can touch. Yes. So if I can touch my high priest, why can't I touch you? Yes. What makes you more untouchable than a high priest that I can touch every day? How dare you tell me that you have to be uncommon when Jesus hung out with the common folks? Yes. Look, if you look at my Facebook today, I'm going to lose about 12 preachers as friends. Just once what happens. Right? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, they, they, they literally, right now, unfriend, unfriend, block, block. That's cool with me. Because again, you have to tell me scripturally where it tells us not to. 
If a man, and, 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 and my partner, uh, Brother Jefferson, but he taught me this lesson, and, and I'm going to add to it. He said, he, and I'm going to tell you what he said, I'm going to tell you something. If a man who works at a barbecue restaurant right. doesn't come home smell like barbecue, oh. he ain't going to work. Oh. If a mechanic don't come yeah. home smell like pigs oil, yeah. chances are he ain't been to work. We were in the chair, he was cutting my hair, and he said something profound. He said, Bishop, let me tell you something. Shepherds should smell like sheep. You should have a fragrance of whatever it is you work around. And it should be on you. You should come home. And people should be able to tell, you've been around some sheep. Well, I have because I'm a shepherd. There's no way I can smell like sheep if I refuse to. Mark 2, Mark 2, chapter, verse 15. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors, tax collectors, that was a very dirty job. Nobody yes, respected. Right. That was like a bill collector back then. And y'all know the bill collectors when they yeah, call you. Right. There, right? there was tax collectors and sinners that were eating with him and his disciples, and there were many who followed him. Wait a minute. He in there with us. People with dirty jobs yeah. and sinners followed Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Y'all see what the text says? Amen. These dirty bill collectors, yes. these sinners, these filthy sinners, they followed Jesus. That's it right. never says Jesus shoot them away. No, never. As a matter of fact, when the religious folks, the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners, and remember, he was sitting down eating, breaking bread with Come the on. sinners and the, and, the, and the dirty bill collectors. Yes. Jesus. Yes. That's right. You want to tell me, don't get common because you have a chain now. Come don't on. get common because you have a cross now. Come when my Savior set with the This is why your church won't grow. Because yeah. you're looking for the well-dressed, the cleaned up, the ones that smell good for money. This is why the ministry won't grow. Because you're looking for those that look like they got it all together. This is why you don't keep preaching to you and your three family members at the ball. Because the real church is out there and you don't want to touch them. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, that word. but the sick. Yeah. I didn't come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Yeah. Can I help somebody in the church? What did Jesus do? Yeah. He wouldn't spend his time preaching to church folks. He'd be out there preaching those that need a savior. He wouldn't spend his time trying to convince title holders how to act. He'd be out there trying to preach to the sinners. Why are you trying to perform for people that already know? religious folks. As a matter of fact, if you notice, Jesus was real peaceful until he comes back in Revelation. But the only time he turned up was against religious folks. And he read the scripture. He didn't turn tables against sinners. He didn't turn tables against church. He turned tables against the church folk because he realized this is my house and you won't even let me in. If you offend me, 
I'm going to turn it off for you the other side to reconcile with you. Yes, yes. If you offend me, I'm going to give you the same grace that God has given me. Yes. If you offend me, I'm going to recognize the fact that the same devil that wants to take me out has no problem using you to take me out. Yes. If you offend me, I'm going to realize that I wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. Yes. And if, you, if you offend me, I'm going to recognize the fact that maybe you just going through something at a particular moment, especially if that's not even your character. I am going to extend the same grace to you that I need God to extend to me on a daily basis. Just don't keep hitting me. Amen. And still we gotta go. Yes. What would Jesus do? He turned the other cheek. Two more, and then our kids are coming in. What would Jesus do concerning my enemies? He would love them. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. We want to be like Jesus. Yes, he would. But we want to hold on to hatred towards people that have done us wrong. Yes. Yes. That's not what Jesus did, y'all. Now I'm not saying that you gotta bring them back into your life. Matter of fact, somebody told me, I saw something the other day that said, you think me, um, you think I'm holding a grudge, no, I just put up a boundary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you. Set boundaries. I pray for you. Yeah. But I don't trust you. Yeah, yeah. And since I don't trust you, the Holy Ghost in me says not to let you that close in this particular Woo! season. But that's not mean that I don't love you. I just have a boundary to protect me and mine. Because if you hurt me again, there's no telling where I might go. So let me just put y'all out. Let me just protect what's in your mind. But Jesus said in Matthew 5, he says to love your enemies. Yes. Yes. Love your enemy. Yes. Pray for those who persecute you. Yes. Yes. And that way you'll be acting like a true child of God. Amen. Amen. When was the last time that you went in a prayer for your enemy? Mm. But not, Lord, give them. Yes. They mess no. with me. No. Well, Lord, would you bless them? Matter of fact, if you pray that God blesses them, chances are they'll be so blessed they'll forget all about you. Lord, Lord, can you bless them? Can you please, can you please sanctify their minds, oh God? When was the last time you went to your prayer closet to pray for those who persecuted you? I want to be like Jesus. And here's the final thing. How many of us have been betrayed? I mean, really betrayed, 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 betrayed. The greatest thing, the funniest thing about betrayal I read is it always comes from a friend. The enemy can't betray you because they're never that close. So how many of us have been betrayed? I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I never thought that she or he would do me like that. I mean, I thought that we would pray up to the grave. I thought we would ride or die. I never really thought that they would have betrayed me at that capacity to the point where not only did they see people form weapons against me, but they actually pulled the trigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many people have been betrayed, betrayed at that point? What would Jesus do? Ooh, that's tough. We often would say quickly, Jesus would forgive. And he let the grudge go. Take a step further. Jesus served yes. the very one who betrayed him. Yes. 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 John 13 tells a story as I get ready to close. He tells a story about Jesus washing feet. Washing feet was a sign of humility and undying love for one another. Mm. You really have to love somebody to wash yes, their feet. Yes. Yeah. You have to be humble Amen. to wash your feet. Amen. And it's one thing to wash feet to show undying love to somebody who loves me back. Mm. But can I serve in that capacity for somebody who betrayed me? Yes. The Bible says that when Jesus chose the twelve, he knew that one would betray him. Yes. If you fast forward to John 13, you find out that he knew that his betrayal was upon him. Yeah. Because he is God and he was here in the beginning, he'll be here in the end. He's an all-knowing, everlasting, all-seeing God. He knew Judas would be the one to betray him. Yeah. But the Bible says that Jesus yet still got on his feet and washed the feet Ooh. of the very person in John my 13 Lord. that would betray him. My Lord. My Lord. What would Jesus do to those that betray him? He would serve them. Yes, he would. What do you mean he would serve them? Yes, he would. As sure as my last name is Shepherd. That if people have a way of betraying you and coming back to you like nothing ever happened. And not everybody's coming back with an apology. Now we're talking, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Because, because some people will betray you and they'll come back and ask for forgiveness. All this love, come on, let's go. But not everybody will be wise enough or even bold enough to come back and apologize. They'll just walk back in like nothing ever happened. Testing your Holy Ghost. Now here's the thing. What would Jesus do? 
Jesus will find an opportunity to serve that very person. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do we really want to be the church of thank Jesus Christ? Yes. Do we really want to represent Jesus in all that we do? Yes. Well, then it's bigger than shouting and dancing. Because I've searched the scripture, you're not going to find one place where Jesus shouted and danced. Amen. Amen. If you find it, let me know. Amen. But what you can do is find how he served those who betrayed him. Yes. You can find how he forgave those that did him wrong. Yes. You can find how he was compassionate to the multitudes. Yes. You can find how he was giving. You can find you can find how he hung out with the people that the church folk didn't want him to hang out with. Right. All this right. other stuff is what we put on. Amen. Amen. We put on the suits. Yes. We brought the organ. We brought the drums. And it's good. It's good. All is good. Yes. But at the core of everything, oh what's the point of going to church every Sunday mm -hmm. if you don't want to be like Jesus at all? Oh my God. Listen, if you're here today and you're struggling with your walk, you want to be like Jesus. But it's just hard. I understand because it's not always easy for none of us. Sometimes, 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 can I, can I tell you some truth? Some tra yes. Not transparency, but translucency. Can I tell you right. a little bit? If you're married, sometimes it's hard to walk like Jesus. Because spouses, spouses, don't always see eye to eye. If you're a family person, it's hard to walk by Jesus mm -hmm. because your children and parents are always seen by God. But I believe that for some of us, God gives us families and children to, to let us work out our kinks real quick yeah. and figure this thing out, yeah. right? Yeah. But here's the cold part. And you don't have to be married or with children right. to experience this. If you are part of a family, like yeah. this is right here, yeah. we're going to have to learn how to walk by Jesus. Right. Yeah. If you have a struggle in your walk, we just want to pray with you. Don't want to embarrass you. Because I can be honest, if everybody raised their hand in here, you'd see all of us have struggles with our walk. Every last one of us. Matter of fact, how about this? If you don't have any struggle in your walk, raise your hand real quick. I need you to pray for all of us. <laughs> but before you pray, I need you to yell across. Uh, and come and pray for you. All right, so, 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 don't feel bad. Paul wrote right into the church of Rome in chapter 7. He says, look, the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing anyway. Uh -huh. He said, I know it's not me. It's the sinful nature. It's the old man in me. He said, thank God for it that I'm free from sin, but there's still something that tugs at me every day. Every morning I wake up, and maybe that's you. Every morning you get up, you wake up wanting to serve the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, but a habit, a relationship, something pulls at you. If that's you, let us pray with you. Just put your hand in the air. Don't be ashamed if that's you. That's you. And I said, okay, that's you. That's you. That's you. That's you. That's you. Amen. Amen. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do as they play. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. As they play something softly, I'm going to anoint my hand with oil. I'm going to anoint your right hand. The right hand is the hand of power. It's the hand of authority. You have the ability to lay hands on yourself and break every chain over your life. The reason I'm going to anoint your hand and I anoint you myself is because only Jesus can only do miracles with those who believed. Yeah. And so I can bring everybody up here and anoint your hands with oil. But if you leave, you come here with unbelief, you're going to leave here with unbelief. Yeah. But if you really want it for yourself, I'm going to anoint your right hand with oil. You're going to lay hands on your head or your heart, wherever you choose to. And you're going to speak breakthrough over your life. Yeah. Because it is, truly is my desire and I believe it's the will of God for us not to just have church. But for us to represent him in all that we do. Amen. Anybody believe that on today? Yes. Anybody? Can I, have, can I have some help? Elders, would you come help me, please? Elders, would you come help me? Good word. Good word. Thank you. I didn't mean to, um, I didn't mean to uh, frustrate, but I did mean to offend on today. Amen. Because Amen. we gotta grow up. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Fathers, I anoint the hands of these elders. Let we'll every right hand that they touch. Right hand, right hand, right hand. That's right. Please follow me. Y'all still Let every right hand I touch be sanctified and consecrated for service on today. And let every right hand that they touch experience breakthrough and deliverance yes. beyond, beyond expectation. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Whoever raise your hand, raise your hand, please. Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid now. Don't be afraid now. Don't be afraid now. Deliverance in Jesus' name. Breakthrough and deliverance in Jesus' name. Breakthrough and deliverance.
deliverance in Jesus' name. If there's a hurt, lay it on your body part. Break through and deliver it in Jesus' name. I believe healing is on the way. Emotional healing, yeah, psychological yeah. healing, yeah. mental healing, yeah. physical healing, spiritual healing. Relationships will be healed on today. Yeah. Break through and deliver it in Jesus' name. Is anybody here that this? Do we miss a hand? Break through and deliver it in Jesus' name. Now, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for access to the throne of grace on today. Lord, it is our desire to walk like you, to talk like you, to live like you. It's our desire that when people see us, they don't see the church, but they see you. They don't see word of life, but they see you. They don't see our title, but they see you. And so now, God, every hand I was raised on today, they confess that there is something that tugs at them, that keeps them from serving you wholeheartedly. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, we serve you notice that in spite of the thorn, they're going to press, they're going to serve, they're going to love, they're going to show Jesus in everything that they do. And Lord, we honor you right now because we leave here bolder. We leave here better. In Jesus' name. Come on, loose those hands and give God a hand praise. Amen, amen. Amen. how real salvation is. Soon and very soon, there's going to be a trumpet that sounds. And when that trumpet sounds, Jesus is coming to get his church. That movie Left Behind doesn't really do it justice. But what it shows is, will some people be sitting in church, they'll blink their eyes, and then half the church is gone. If that were to happen within the next two minutes, do you know where you'd be? If you do not know, now is the time for you to get saved. Being saved does not mean that you're perfect, does not mean that you're going to get it right every day, but it does seal your soul for eternity. It protects you and preserves you from a fiery second death, which we know is hell. Is anyone here not saved on today? We just want to lead you with a quick prayer to bring you into the kingdom of God. Anybody not saved on today? Anybody not saved? Everybody is saved. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
So if all hearts and minds are clear, glory to God. Let's go to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, God, once again. We give you glory, Father God. We give you praise and honor for who you are, Father God. There is none like you. Hallelujah. You are the great I am, Father God, and we are so grateful that you chose us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word that went forth, Father. Father, God, help us. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We need to hide that word in our heart, Father, so that we can walk it out in our lives, Father, so that those out there who don't know you, Father, will look at us and say, what is it about you? What is that light? Hallelujah. I want that same light, Father. And we can explain to them that that light is Jesus Christ, God. Help us, Father, to be bold and not timid, God, as, as the preacher asked, God, in the name of Jesus. Not just bold in the world, Father, but bold in the Holy Ghost, God, in the name of Jesus. So that we can go out there, Father God, and win souls for you. So, Lord, we thank you, God, and we pray that as we leave this place, but never your presence, that you be with us. That you watch over us and keep us, Father. Father God, lead us and guide us, God, in all truth, Father. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen.